The next presentation is going to be Dr. Faye Murin, the Dean Pro Tempo of the School of Graduate Studies. Uh, Dr. Murin is uh, the Dean Pro Tempo of the Graduate Stud Studies, as I said, and also an Associate Professor uh, in the Department of Biology. Uh, she is actually a graduate of Memorial University for the bachelor's, and she got her PhD at Queen's University. Uh, she has been very successful academically. Just uh, as an example, she has been awarded the MSA, which is Mycological Society of America Flow for her, for her contribution, as well as uh, Women in Science and Engineering Lifetop, Lifetime Membership Award, which is great. Please join me welcoming Dr. Faye Murray. Thank you, Hassan. And thank you, Ashley, to both, of, bo to both Ashley and to a Ashley Forrestal, I should say, from the School of Graduate Studies, and Hassan, who's leading the GSU this year. And uh, I'd really like to thank them for putting all this together and being so efficient and positive about all of this. So thanks very much, you folks. Um, let me just grab a glass of water. There we go. Okay, so uh, it's great to see such a crowd. I think this is the biggest uh, orientation of graduate students that we've had at Memorial, so yay, great to see you. Uh, this is a wonderful room, and I hope you come to a lot of our events here in the future. So as uh, Hassam said, I'm a graduate of Memorial. I was actually born in St. John's. I spent my first six uh, months uh, in a house just across the street from the university. Little did I know at the time I would be dean of the School of Graduate Studies. Uh, a number of years later. I won't say how many. Uh, so it's, uh, it's interesting pathways. Uh, I didn't uh, stay here, as he mentioned, as Hassan mentioned. I uh, was a graduate student at several other universities and really, really enjoyed myself. I hope that you have as much enjoyment of graduate school as I did, that you grow as much and that you get as much from it. Uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, that everybody sort of have, uh, enjoy themselves. The two messages that the President and Dr. Reynolds gave, uh, I think you'll, see, you'll hear in my presentation as well. One is that thank you very much for coming to Memorial University. We think you've made the right choice. It's a great place to be, but we do appreciate you coming here. The second thing is you don't do this by yourself. You have help here. Some people are going to be more independent than others, but even the very independent people, you can learn and grow by asking questions. I remember once the, one of the most impressive things I saw on a, a CV, one of the jobs I have at a, as the Dean of the School of Graduate Studies is uh, interviewing uh, people who've applied for tenure track positions at the university. And I remember reviewing a CV of someone, and I won't say the name, but it was a fairly senior person and they were, were coming as a, as a chair of a particular um, um, group at, in the university. And one of the things I was very impressed with on that resume was how many things that that uh, very well-established researcher had done, even in, research, in recent years, to uh, advance his professional development. He was not above going out uh, doing, to a workshop or to um, uh, some sort of session or opportunity for him to develop additional skills, whether it was in a computer uh, or in teaching or in a number of different things. So I'd, I'd, I'd uh, stress to you to reach out, take as advantage of as many opportunities as you can while you're here, and don't feel that, oh, you won't get something from it or you know maybe it's not, uh, it's not for you. Go out and grab those opportunities when they come up. Okay, let's see. If I flick this, do I get my first slide? Oh, I sort of do. Okay, so welcome, as I already said. Uh, this is, in some ways, a terrible slide. Uh, it's, a, it's supposed to represent you at the beginning of your, uh, this particular graduate degree. We know, of course, that you bring all kinds of wonderful things with you uh, to your degree program. And, you wouldn't be here without that, uh, that uh, load of information and that personality that you have. But over the next year or two years or four years or even five years perhaps for some folks, you will be adding on to that and I hope that, that, that your, um, uh, what, you, what you learn in the next few years and what you give to other people contributes to that person that you already are in a very positive way. Can I ask to start with, I guess, a little bit of uh, we've got so many people here. How many folks here are doing master's programs? 
Okay, so okay, mostly master's programs. How about, and some PhD, in PhD programs now? Okay, not quite so many, uh, but uh, that's great, welcome. I wanted to put this slide in to bring up something that's called, and I, you may or may not have heard of it before, and that's the imposter syndrome. Is that something that's familiar to a lot of you? This is something that I don't want any of you to feel. The imposter syndrome is a well-documented phenomenon that no matter what level you're at, whether you're starting kindergarten, starting a graduate degree, or like I was last year, starting as the dean of the School of Graduate Studies, sometimes you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't really belong here. How did I get here? People are soon gonna find out I don't know what I'm doing, right? Very well-documented. I want you to know that None of you are imposters. You were all here. You've all had wonderful um, accomplishments to get you this far. So you're not imposters. Ask questions, go forward, and uh, we'll see you at the other side when you're graduating. Uh, one of the things that uh, I think you may be thinking is that uh, you have certain plans. Uh, this is a cartoon from Jorge Cham and from PhD Comics. How many of you know Jorge Cham's work? Oh, everybody doesn't. Okay, you've got to go online and Google, uh, uh, see, PhD comics and Jorge Cham. He's got a huge number of comics that they just, they, they resonate with all of us. Very, very important that you, you he's funny. He's really funny. He's, sat, he's been here and given us a talk. Uh, he's a um, well, um, uh, established researcher and engineer, but he's actually making his living now doing comics and supporting all our graduate students. So, uh, so the life plan that he, show, that he shows here in this comic, so it's a nice, very linear thing, but really your life is gonna take a few little twists and turns along the way. It may not be quite so straight, uh, but it'll be the same. Everybody else, nobody else is going on a, a straight line either. So uh, don't worry about that. One of the things we want you to do, we've asked to do, face challenges while you're here. I mean, you don't have to bungee jump if you don't want to. Don't, don't think you gotta do that kind of stuff. However, we do want you to, to face challenges, push yourselves a little bit. Even coming here, I know that's, that's, a, a, thing, that's a, a challenge as well. Who is this? Okay, sorry, it's good so face challenges, take risks. Who's that? The <laughs> same person. Okay, great. And, and you will hopefully be in a, a cohort of people right now uh, at orientation. You're here with uh, new uh, uh, graduate students and I see some supervisors and, other supervisors and other people out. And you'll hopefully be a member of team uh, while you're here. And some of you may actually uh, be out, maybe not right away, but show your leadership and uh, be leaders in your labs maybe, if you're doing a lab in your classes, you may take it further out into the community as well. But um, that, this, uh, this is an image I'm sure you're familiar with as well. One of the things that, other things that also happens in graduate school, and maybe it doesn't happen to everybody, but it sure happened to me, it still happens to me, is the idea of procrastination. Jorge Cham, who I referred to earlier doing PhD comics, he's made an, a, a career now on procrastination. So try not to procrastinate too much. This is what happens. Try to keep on top of things. However, you know, personally, my, um, my um, experience with procrastination has been more, well, you know, I'm procrastinating because I don't wanna do this. So I actually go to my old procrastinated list and get some of that done. So sometimes that's a strategy. Procrastinating on this gets you back to what you should have done last week. But anyway, just, just an idea. Don't procrastinate. Even if you go over to Bitters with some friends and talk about your work or your challenges, that's progress in grad school as well as, as reading. So I'm not kidding. It's important to do that. The one thing, the one challenge that a lot of us face, I think, more, they've done, again, they've done surveys on this, more challenging to people, and the thing that people hate the most, more than death, is speaking publicly. How many people feel that way? Maybe not death, but really hate to speak publicly. Try doing that as often as you can. I remember as an undergraduate giving my first talk in a class, I was in the women's washroom doing deep knee bends because I was just so, I was dying, right? So, uh, so take opportunities, teach classes, 
that kind of thing is really helpful uh, for public speaking. So any opportunity you get to open your mouth, well, maybe not any opportunity, <laughs> consider what you're saying. But uh, don't think that speaking is a, uh, you, you have to be perfect at any time. You're all interesting people. You all have interesting things to say. Uh, try to face that one for sure. And we won't leave you up there with nothing on. If you, or to, no, not nothing on, with totally exposed, uh, we will help you. As Dr. Reynolds said, there's lots of things here for people for you to speak to or uh, professional development opportunities that will ha help you develop into the person uh, and the, maybe the public speaker that you want to be. And this is my favorite slide of the day, or maybe my second favorite slide of the day, and we hope that we can uh, see you become the person that you want to be or the big cat. Okay. Good. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of time and talk about not actually some of the top strategies for a successful graduate program, um, but actually focus on one. And during graduate school, you're going to have to learn to jump through hoops over obstacles and end up with your degree or your parchment. The one thing, if there's anything I can advise you, is to communicate. The most important thing for you to get through those obstacles is communication. Never feel like the person here is a mime. I mean, sometimes you have to be quiet, but some, we don't want you to feel like you're behind a wall and can't speak, that you don't have a voice. You have a voice. Communication is the most important uh, tool that you're going to learn or that you're going to develop even further in graduate school. So my favorite example of communication is this one. This is me when I'm not in a skirt. And this is a, a little dog called Benji. And we're doing, uh, what, do we know what we're doing here? We're doing uh, early agility training. And one of the things I learned from this is that if we want to be successful, communication is very, very important. And it's communication is two-way. It's not only expect that, that you have to communicate, but the person that you're communicating, for example, your supervisor has to, be, has to be communicating as well. Expect that, your supervisor or other folks. And then you'll end up with your degree and your parchment in a couple of years with uh, Dr. Kachanowski and the Dean of the School of Graduate Studies on the stage over in the Arts and Culture Center. Hugely important to communicate with your supervisor. And it's the most, if you have a supervisor or an advisor, some of you are going to be doing course-based uh, um, degrees, course-based masters, I'm sure, but many of you will also be doing research. Regardless, communicate with your advisor or your supervisor because that, that relationship with your supervisor and with your committee members is probably the most important part of graduate school uh, for you to uh, become successful. We have some outstanding faculty here. I wish I could say everyone was outstanding. Most of them are. Uh, anyway, no, I won't go down that road. Okay. Uh, some of our outstanding faculty are, are illustrated here. The president, Dr. Kaczkanowski, a little while ago initiated the President's Award for Outstanding Graduate Student Supervision. These are the folks who got the award in the first three years, Dr. David Schneider, Dr. Lisa Rankin, and Dr. Fezel Khan. Uh, they're from uh, science, arts, and engineering faculties, respectively. They're, they're really exceptional supervisors. If you have one of those folks for your supervisors, you really locked out here. Um, but of course, um, we also have lots of other outstanding faculty members as well. And here are some of them. We have uh, nine faculty who have received the 3M Teaching Fellowships. That's an award uh, that recognizes nationally and internationally the best teachers that we have. We have uh, presently 13 re Canada research chairs, again, national recognition of the best researchers in Canada. And they are in over 100 degree programs. And you can see some of the 13 research chairs that we presently have um, um, smiling at you there. Everybody looks pretty happy. They must have great graduate students. That's what makes the supervisor happy. Outstanding, gra outstanding faculty lead to outstanding uh, students as well. And here are some of our students that are outstanding. Uh, we have uh, one student who received the 3M Teaching Fellowship uh, for a graduate student. We have, um, in the second picture here, uh, the person who won the Shirk Talent Award last year, um, Kirk Luther. I'm not sure if you know what the Shirk Talent Award is. There is one given out in all of Canada. 
Last year it came to a memorial student. Just shows how excellent our students are. You folks, I hope there's a couple more talent award winners out there. Uh, we also have uh, illustrated here a couple of people who won Vanier Awards. These are very prestigious awards, uh, graduate student awards for slightly lower than the, than the uh, talent award. These are only $15, uh, 15, 50, I'm sorry, 50,000 a year uh, for uh, three years. And we're happy to say uh, Cat Lord and Peng Lu uh, have, been have, have been awarded those in Shirk and NSERC. So these are some of the type of students that we have, excellent students. And I know that in this room, there are a lot of people who can also, um, are also excellent. And some of you will be getting some of these uh, exceptional awards. The Vanier Award, we just had an a, um, information session and a um, workshop on the Vanier Award, how to do the application a bit. And we're really happy with the turnout there. So keep your eyes open again for opportunities to learn things. And hopefully, we'll see um, uh, your uh, applications come in through the School of Graduate Studies. So with your supervisor, for the kind of conversations you might have, I'll just go through a couple of things that you might think about talking about with your supervisors. First of all, supervisors should be readily accessible to you for feedback and for uh, monitoring in some ways, it sounds a bit. But they, your supervisor or your advisor should be accessible to you. At the same time, you should be accessible to them. Don't disappear for too long periods at a time. So very important. Have a discussion, if you haven't already, with your supervisor or your advisor about expectations, roles, and responsibilities, both from, their, from your point of view and from their point of view. What are your responsibilities? What are their responsibilities? That's a totally acceptable and reasonable uh, thing to talk to your supervisors about and something that we encourage. They should be mentors. They should be opening doors for you. They should encourage intellectual debate and challenge should be encouraged and supported. Okay. This is, you don't have to just you know, follow every word they say and never, never um, uh, speak up. You should, as we've already mentioned, uh, take advantage of any uh, professional development opportunities. And you'll see a lot of notices go out to you about our uh, professional development opportunities. There are lots of them. And uh, if you go to uh, our website and look up EDGE, you can see what some of those are. Discuss standards of academic integrity, v hugely important. They're very important to this university. They're in very important nationally. Our funding tri-councils, SHRC, NSERC, and CIHR, which are the um, arts and humanities, science and engineering, and uh, medical uh, uh, funding bodies nationally, hugely important that uh, academic integrity is maintained. Into, uh, you can talk about intellectual property and authorship on any papers that you might be publishing with your, you, with your supervisor. Most importantly, if you feel like you're having some conflict, whether it's with your supervisor or, any, or anyone else, try to address those early and try to address them with the person directly initially or someone close to them if you uh, would rather have somebody else involved. If there are conflicts, don't let them go for a long time. Speak up. I mean, you know, don't go in with fisticuffs, but you know what I mean. Okay. So just to summarize a bit, successful supervision depends on a healthy and productive relationship between supervisors and graduate students based on mutual respect and professionalism. The professionalism part varies from uh, one um, uh, group to another, depending on what discipline you're in sometimes. I know that, sounds, that may sound a little terrible. But I remember being at a Canadian Association of Grad Schools meetings at one point, and somebody was up talking about professionalism. And one of the things they said was that you should never drink with your students. I'm a biologist. I, <laughs> laughter from another biologist over there. <laughs> anyway, so. But in some, uh, under some circumstances, that's not uh, uh, really looked uh, on uh, properly. But professionalism, you learn the, um, uh, um, your, uh, you learn the area that you're in, uh, and hopefully that works. Communication again. This is this is I'm going to harp on communication a whole lot. Also, communication with your the broader community, really really important. 
communication with your supervisor, communication with your committee members, with the School of Graduate Studies and all that, but also with the broader community. Look around you. So right now, you're surrounded by your peers, and you might think it's more important to maybe talk to the president or talk to me or talk to our associate dean over there. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> Catherine Side, our associate dean. Uh, you might think that, oh, I should be talking to them in order to get forward, but you know what? Sometimes it's the people around you, your peers that are gonna make a lot of difference. Not only are they going to you know, give you support or give you feedback during your classes or some of your research perhaps, but later on in your career, they may be the people indeed who are reviewing your grant applications if that's the way you go, or they may be hiring in industry if that's that. So look around, make connections with your peers as well as with you know, uh, other people that you think may be in great positions at the moment. So connect with your peers, connect with School of Graduate Studies. We're just outside, just down the corridor here. Um, with the community, again, I think Dr. Reynolds alluded to the fact that really your research is really important, and I, I think that's hugely important, uh, but it really needs to uh, be applicable, not maybe right away and directly, but you should really think about what the connections are for the broader community, maybe for Newfoundland, maybe for Canada, maybe globally, because they're there. Sometimes we don't see them, but think about them, so take those opportunities. The icky part of all of this, although we say, you know, there's a lot of student services at Memorial, students have substantial responsibility for managing their own graduate education. Very, very important. Take initiative, be tenacious, hang in there. Sometimes that's what it takes, hanging in there. And I've always liked this quote, the future is not a place we are going, but a place we are making. So the process is really, really important to get to your degree, the completion of your degree. The other part of this, of course, uh, besides the communication, is to have, jo have fun. As I said, my, my graduate degrees, um, I worked very hard, but I had a very good time. This is another quote that I love. Biologists love their organisms collectively, singly, sliced, macerated, or homogenized. And that is true. And these are some uh, pictures that I've taken over, over the years, and I love those pictures. I love those organisms. Uh, just like, you know, I really do, you know, you just got to have that passion for them. N you know, it might seem ridiculous to somebody else, but I can always also look at these and, and link them to uh, um, global issues or national issues. The top two picture pictures, I'm a mycologist, so I study fungi, of all the weird things in the world to study, but what do I love? Fungi. Uh, so these are um, beautiful images uh, to me, um, very interesting. I spent a lot of, I spent my PhD looking at these guys. Uh, these are pathogen, uh, uh, they, these um, infect uh, forest pathogens, so uh, they have an impact on biocontrol of uh, insects in forests, so it has that kind of connection. But really what drives me is the, is the you know, just really liking these organisms. Um, and the lower one, it's a mushroom. I haven't done a lot of uh, professional work with mushrooms, uh, but I have done some, uh, I've done some, and they connect, of course, to uh, forest health as well. And I, but I won't go into those, obviously. Okay, so no talk is uh, complete without, I'll end up with a few uh, numbers. So this is my most complicated slide that I'll have in here. This is a percentage of chart which looks like Pac-Man, and then that other part does not look like Pac-Man. So do people remember who Pac-Man is? <laughs> yeah, some people do. So it, was, it, was a, it was a computer game, anyway. So little Pac-Man goes along and eats stuff. So that's the most complicated slide, but I'll give you some numbers. So there are more than 200,000 students pursuing, pursuing graduate studies in Canada. Lots of uh, people, which is great. They have a significant impact on Canada's long-term economic prosperity. Again, something to keep in mind. I think when I was a graduate student, I wasn't thinking of that, so I, 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 I like people to try to think about that. And of course, funding agencies um, are looking for that as well. And, they and graduates, as you folks, will, will contribute to innovation and productivity um, and growth through research and educational activities. You will make huge contributions. Um, our universities award approximately 5,000 doctoral degrees to students an annually, it's approximate. The average age of a uh, doctoral student at graduation is 35 years now. That's significantly older than it was at one point but life intervenes, as I said earlier. And uh, a doctoral student takes an average in Canada of five years and nine months to complete. 
Our programs mainly are set up for four years. Here at Memorial, our average is a, is a bit better than the national average. Uh, it's, it's five plus a, a few months. So. so the majority of students are married at the time they receive their doctoral degree. And 36% have dependent children. I'm sure some of you do already. I like the next line. Half of these find a partner during graduate school. Another reason to network with your neighbors. <laughs> Married men show better outcomes than single men, so the wife helps. S however, same outcomes for women, married or single. So the men women might want to think about that one. <laughs> This is just some numbers about incomes. These are, it's higher now. These are, these are uh, a little bit low, a little bit old, these, uh, these data. Doctoral graduates have a median income of 65,000. I think that's closer to like 85 or 90 now. The average salary difference between a master's and PhD is not that great. Graduates who plan to take a doctorate postdoc have a median income of 54,000, again, it's more than, a bit more than that now, while those who plan to directly enter the labor market have a median income of 72,000. That may be a reflection of the professional schools and uh, that type of thing. So in, in 2007, so quite a while ago, but I think this trend is still continuing, the largest earnings gap existed between the bachelors and the, the bachelors. Hmm. <laughs> I'll try that one again. The bachelors and the master's levels, suggesting that investing in future postgraduate work is financially beneficial, so it doesn't hurt. Okay, so we wanna see you at the finish line. We want you to be successful in completing uh, your degrees, and we'll do everything to help you along the way, although we know you're just gonna be motoring along yourself. We'll, maybe we'll have to keep up with you, you'll be doing so well. And the School of Graduate Studies, we have a team there that I hope you'll uh, get to know perhaps a bit more. As I mentioned on the top uh, uh, small picture there is Catherine Side, our Associate Dean. Um, my background, as I mentioned, is in, is in biology, so usually the dean and the associate dean of the School of Graduate Studies have different disciplines, sciences, and arts and humanities, so uh, Catherine is an arts and, hum art, arts and humanities expert. Um, Andrew Kim, who's also over here, uh, he is our director of enrollment, and uh, how many of you know Andrew already? Some of you? Yeah, okay. Man, I tell you, he's, he's pretty important. He's pretty, um, pretty, um, I want to call him the linchpin, but I don't know if that's a good word or not. It may be kingpin in our office. Uh, Carol Sullivan. Is Carol here? No? Oh, there you are, Carol over there. Uh, Carol Sullivan uh, uh, has been here not quite a year yet, but coming up to that. Uh, Carol is our manager of fellowships. So she's the one that handles your money and pay, so you want to know her. Uh, she's great. And so uh, that's somebody uh, in our office, Hydewell. This uh, picture has um, got some people, uh, people in it who are still, uh, uh, or most of them are still in our office, but some of them have moved on. Um, we have folks who are, along with Andrew, looking after all your admissions. So uh, this is Kim in the back and Deneen in the front, and they've, been, they've already handled all your admissions. So, so now we'll move on to Gail Lampkin. She's, again, our fellowships officer, so any uh, awards that you get will be handled through her. Who else do we have up here? Jennifer Williams, who does a lot of professional development for us. And Sharon Windsor, she handles things like leaves of absence if you need such a thing, and uh, uh, a number of other things like that. The person in sort of center around right here, this is a, this is a very important person. This is Ruby Barron. She looks after theses uh, submissions and defenses. Really important, so you'll be uh, communicating with her at some point. Just want to put some faces. But last but not least, this is Annette Williams. Oh, this is Annette Williams there. Annette's been in the School of Graduate Studies for many years as our senior secretary and knows the ropes and is hugely helpful. So those are some of the people that are just down the hallway and are ready to help you. There's a, of course, there are other people that aren't in this picture, including Ashley Forrestal, who's back there, who hopefully you will get to know a little better as well. So this is my last slide. I'm hoping that uh, down the road we will uh, be celebrating your graduation in a year or two or maybe four or five and a half, and that uh, we'll be able to shake your hand and you'll be, uh, have had a wonderful time here at Memorial. So thank you very much for your attention.